Welcome! The following video will highlight the main installation steps required to get started with your LDCO841 or 863 Smart Garage Door Operator. You'll want to begin by unboxing the head, as well as its parts and accessories. Here's a quick tip. Use the pull tab on the rail box to easily unbox the rail. Next, you're going to attach the rail to the head. Lay the head on the ground on top of cardboard or foam to protect the finish. You'll then want to align the rail over the center of the head and then slide the rail sprocket onto the head's drive shaft. Secure the rail to the operator head by installing and tightening the four included quarter 20 by three quarter bolts with a 7 16 socket. Next, you'll want to install the header bracket. Refer to the installation manual for instructions on how to locate the right header bracket position. Once you've located the correct position for the header bracket, drill two pilot holes about two inches deep and then use two 5 16 by two inch lag screws with a half inch socket to secure the bracket to the wall. Next, you'll want to connect the rail to the header bracket. First, insert the end of the rail into the header bracket, and then insert the longer of the three clevis pins through the header bracket and rail. Secure the clevis pin with the hitch pin. You can now hang the operator. Note, before you can hang the operator, you'll need to install hanging brackets. Refer to the installation guide for instructions on how to install hanging brackets. You'll then use the two supplied 5 16 18 hex bolts and 5 16 18 keps nuts to attach the operator to the hanging brackets with a half inch socket. Make sure to tighten the nuts and all hanging hardware. Now it's time for you to install the wall station. First, Connect the wall station wires to the terminals located on the back of the wall station. The wall station is polarity sensitive. Make sure you connect the common wire to the terminal labeled common and connect the wall station wire to the wall station terminal. Note, if this is a non-pre-wire installation, you'll want to remember which terminal the marked wire is connected to. The marked wire must be connected to the same terminal in both the wall station and operator. For example, if you connect the marked wire to the terminal labeled wall station on the wall station, you'll need to connect the marked wire to the wall station terminal on the operator as well. We'll discuss operator wiring in a minute. You can then use the provided screws to mount the wall station. Note please be very careful to not over-tighten the screw. Next, you're going to connect the wall station's wires to the operator. Connect the wall station wire to the operator's wall station terminal and connect the common wire to the operator's common terminal. Note, polarity is critical. As mentioned earlier, if this is a pre-wire installation, Ensure the marked wire is connected to the same terminal label on the operator as the wall station. Next, you're going to install the safety beams. Begin by mounting the two safety beam brackets. Refer to the installation manual for instructions on where to install the two safety beam brackets. Note, the center line of the safety beam lenses should be five and a half inches above the floor and extend past any door track or hardware. Once you've located a good position for each of the safety beam brackets, mount two of the L-shaped brackets on each side of the garage door using two quarter inch by one and a quarter inch lag screws with a 7 16 inch socket. Then take the two remaining L-shaped brackets and use a quarter 20 by 3 4 inch bolt and a one quarter 20 caps nut to secure each of the remaining brackets to each of the mounted brackets. Next, you're going to insert the sender and receiver into the bracket holes and twist the units until the spring clips lock into a detent mark on the brackets. After you install the safety beams, you'll want to connect the safety beam wires to your operator. 
Connect the one wire from each safety beam side to the operator's common and beam terminals. Note, these connections are not polarity sensitive. Next, you're going to install the door bracket and door arm. Begin by mounting the door bracket to the garage door. Refer to your garage door manufacturer for appropriate door bracket mounting hardware. Next, you can connect the door arm to the trolley. Insert the single hole end of the straight door arm into the slot in the trolley. Slide the remaining 1 and 1 8 inch clevis pin through the hole in the middle of the trolley and secure it with a hitch pin. Then, you'll need to attach the curved door arm to the door bracket. Insert the single hole end of the curved door arm into the door bracket. You can then slide the longer of the two clevis pins through the door bracket and door arm holes. Then, you'll want to use a hitch pin to secure the clevis pin. Next, you're going to connect the two door arms. You'll want to rotate the curved door arm upward to meet the straight door arm connected to the trolley. Align the two door arms so that the holes in both arms overlap. Note, you may need to release the trolley to get the holes in the arms to properly line up. Once you have the door arms properly aligned, insert bolts into the lowest and highest matching holes. You can then secure the two 5 16 18 by 1 inch bolts and 5 16 caps nuts with a 1 half inch socket. You can then use the supplied cord to attach the red release handle to the trolley's lever. Note, the handle should be at least 6 feet from the floor. You'll now want to connect the battery backup. You can access the battery by removing the four housing Phillips head screws and then removing the housing. If you're installing an LDCO863 model, then connect the red wire to the terminal marked with either a positive sign or red square. Note, the black wire should already be connected to the negative terminal. If you are installing an LDCO841 model, the BAT54 box battery backup assembly is optional and must be purchased separately. If you choose to use the optional battery backup for your LDCO841 model, See the installation manual for detailed instructions regarding how to connect the battery and its enclosure to your operator. Note, as with any battery backup unit, the battery will need to be replaced in two to five years. Once the battery wires are connected, you'll hear the operator beep and the LEDs will illuminate. The operator is now operational. You can then replace the operator housing and reinstall the four screws to secure the housing. Lastly, you'll want to connect the operator to a power source. Note, please check your local electrical codes and regulations. If you need to hardwire the operator, view the instructions listed in our installation manual. Once power is applied to the operator, you'll hear a click sound and the operator's light will turn on. You'll also notice the LED lights on both the safety beams and wall station will illuminate as well. Note, if any of these lights aren't illuminated, check your power source and wiring. Congratulations! You've now mounted and connected the operator along with its parts and accessories. Now, let's talk about your next steps to finalize the installation process. Note, we'll provide a brief overview, so if you need more detailed instructions on any of the next few steps, view the installation or homeowner manuals or view our other training videos. To finish the installation process, you'll need to align the safety beams, program the remote control, and verify the preset limits. Out of the box, the operator is preset on its close limit, and the open limit is preset for a typical 7-foot high door. If you need to adjust your limits, see the manual or our training videos. Next, you'll set up the automatic door force perform a safety reversal system test, and adjust the force factor setting if needed. You'll then want to use the Linear app to set up the customer's account and connect the opener to the customer's local Wi-Fi network. 
After you've completed all these steps, you're done installing your smart garage door operator. For more information on anything covered in this video, view the installation or homeowner manuals, or view our other training videos.